The Off-Road Zone is brought to you by CF Moto Canada. We're all in. Are you? Honda. Yamaha. Chaco. everyone and welcome to the off-road zone this week we waste no time in getting back to newfoundland and labrador for the second part of our journey exploring the wilderness around corner brook if you remember last time corner brook is located on the bay of islands at the mouth of the humber river it was james cook who first charted the humber back in the summer of 1767 it was named for its English counterpart, the Humber Estuary. The Humber is rich in Atlantic salmon and was, from the 1800s, used as a waterway for European trappers and loggers. It continues to be considered one of the best recreational salmon fishing rivers in the world. Let us now join the group led by the fine folks at Rugged Edge and Pirate's Haven, friendly RV resort and ATV adventures. I met this really wonderful woman by the name of, of Phoebe and this again, we just meet this woman two minutes in, she's willing to come out on the ride with us, dress up as a moose, be a complete fun person and let's just say from the second that I met Phoebe to the second that she left, I don't think I need to go to the gym and do an ab workout for at least a couple of days because we laugh so hard. I mean, you know those true belly laughs? We belly laughed and belly laughed and belly laughed and we had a chance to kind of get acquainted with that and get to get acclimated once we got in the vehicle because she rode with me all day, take the moose costume out into the bush and get a chance to ride through these cuts all the way to this magnificent feature that they call the sinkhole. The place we rode into is that the road we're going in is called Whitewash. You end up and you drive right on in through the back country and you actually go into a place called the sinkhole. Originally, like I said, my father and them years ago, I mean, they worked those woods for generations and I'd never even heard of it as a kid. It took me coming almost back home, just before I came home, that it actually was there. Apparently, it's only really opened up largely in the last while. And there used to be a sawmill at the top and I've heard stories about the lumber being just tossed and it would just vanish right into the hole so it, it's just become a major tourist attraction when people come over because I mean it is a beautiful thing and if you want to venture down which I know you do <laughs> did um, well you know what it's well worth it such an incredible place. You do use at your own risk, but sometimes you gotta take a little risk. So as we were waiting for the guys to come up and we got out a little snack, Almost immediately, these local birds that they call gray jays decided to start descending down and swooping on us, trying to take our food. So that was actually pretty fun, I have to tell you. And we started, you know, putting food on our shoulders and putting it on top of our head or on top of vehicles. And when the boys got back up from the bottom, I mean, within seconds, both Ken and his cameraman, Baptiste, um, had them literally all over them. And, you know, check out some of these slow motion shots of these jays taken off out of the boys' hands, and you'll see that this was really really an awesome moment.
Coming up, we're going to get a little down and dirty. Stay with us. We do for a lot of the tours, tourists that come around here. We will, we got guided tours that we we plan for them. We got cabins up around the bend here. I don't know if you went up there. Yes, we did. And we got RV park here for the summer. So we give them place to stay, place to eat. And then we take them in around where you were to today. And everybody around the pond, look, this is the place to be. Like he comes in, we have live entertainment on Saturdays during our peak seasons. And Friday nights, we have open mic night, so there's always somebody around. The food is amazing. People around here are amazing. Like, everybody greets you with a smile. Just like you come in here, we love to see everybody coming in here. We'll do whatever we can to meet whatever needs you need done, and everybody around here is the same thing. It's just, just like you're walking into your own home. <laughs> It's very big around here. Like we're we're right in the middle of all the groom trails, and it goes in right to the sinkhole. You can go into the gorge, everywhere around here, and we get people from all over the world coming in here for skidoo season. Like there's this place be blocked with skidoos. Jack Ladder's parking lot we're standing in right now and it, this is a great jump off area. You're coming over across from the airport from Deer Lake, you come over to the Jack Ladder, you gas up, you have something to eat, you can head on down. I tell people I live at the gateway to the Grossmore National Park. And that's the best way I could say, I mean, I'm, I don't have to make it sound grander than it is because it is that grand. So. I, I absolutely love it since I moved home here and like t at this age and, and at a young age I don't think you appreciate it as much as most people should and sometimes it takes to come home again to actually appreciate it and I do every single day. The, the reason for bringing you guys here I wanted to showcase uh, what we had to offer here in Newfoundland especially on the west coast of Newfoundland. Uh, we have lots of things to see and do here. Great scenery, and we uh, we have a va we have a vast variety of terrain here for riding, and uh, and lots of sights to see. I've been involved in the uh, I guess power sports and, and, and kind of all, all my life since I've been a kid. I've always had dirt bikes and quads and snowmobiles. Uh, when I was 20, I had my, I was lucky enough to have my own dealership and, and start off. I've moved around, tried some different things, and then came back again. This time I'm doing things a little differently. We still do retail and we sell power sports sales, but uh, we're starting to look at doing tours and, and guided trips and, and looking at to people when they come to visit Newfoundland. The power sport business is something that I've always had a strong interest in. I've always been interested in, in anything with an engine since I was a little kid. Um, I really liked camaraderie. I like the friendships I make with people. Um, I like taking people out and showing them what, what's here and what we can offer people to see and do.
Dogged Edge story, I guess, was uh, I always wanted to have a bigger, better shop. We're in a, we know we're, we live in a small town in, in Cornerbrook, Newfoundland. Uh, I always, when I'd go on holidays or go anywhere to visit, I'd always want to go to a big power sports store, and I always dreamed of having a place, you know, home like that. And I wanted a place that uh, our customers would feel like friends when they came in, that we had, uh, you know, nice colors, nice clean uh, displays, and sizes from, you know, we carry everything from like a, a size two in a kids to a 5X in a, in a men's. Uh, we want a place that not just for guys to come in and talk about you know snowmobiling and, and their ATVs. We want women to come in and kids, and, and we get we got a lot of people that just come in and hang out. They drop in to visit every few days, so um, that was the big reason for starting Rugged Edge. Newfoundland is completely unique. Um, we travel a lot, and my favorite places are the unique places and the people. And uh, I think that's what you get here in Newfoundland. You get um, an authentic experience. Uh, everything is unique, from the food to the music, the culture, traditions. Um, and there's, there's beauty at every corner. There, it's just a beautiful place, more so than anywhere I've ever been. And the more I travel, the more I realize how much we have in our own backyard. Newfoundlanders have a, have a, a tradition of just being very friendly and welcoming, curious about who you are and where you've come from. I read an article recently that said uh, it, it's almost an awkward friendliness. Outsiders don't know how to react because we're so friendly. I enjoy the scenery. I'm not somebody that goes uh, out for a fast run. I like to look around and Newfoundland's so beautiful and the back country, there's just so much to see. That's why I enjoy about it most. Coming up, we're going to end this unforgettable trip by sampling local culinary delights. Stay tuned. Perfect day of riding uh, would be a bright sunny day, blue skies, um, great group of friends or family. Just going out and enjoying each other. Uh, if it's snowmobiling, maybe doing some ice fishing, um, having a, a cook up, a boil up, as we say in Newfoundland in the woods. Um, just making memories really out on the trail. area there's several things that I kind of put on my must see must do list outside of course getting out on your snowmobile or ATV because that's first and foremost for me anyway where we're sitting right now is the point up here where they have a special installation here in the city um, all dedicated to Captain Cook and Captain Cook was the first person that mapped this area and over here in the installation just behind me you're going to be shocked to see the technology that they used then and a current map from today to see just how detailed and accurate it is. It's virtually exact. So that for me was an interesting thing to learn and I love learning as I travel all over the world about how Captain Cook wasn't just a discoverer but he was also a cartographer and mapped all these different places all over the world. So he spent a total of about five years in this area mapping all the coastline of Newfoundland uh, before he was then reassigned on his next trip to go and then finish off his career as a map maker in Tahiti. So that's an absolutely must see. I like it being outdoors and we do it uh, all year round. Uh, it's relaxing, it's socializing. We have great meals in the, in, in the woods and it's just get away from the home and uh, go with friends and, and enjoy the outdoors. Uh, likewise, uh, we've always enjoyed the outdoors, uh, spend a lot of time outdoors, we always have. Uh, we've, uh, we've been married 51 years and uh, ever since we've been married we've Seems been... longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since we've been married we've always uh, had outdoor activities in our lives with our children and uh, had a snowmobile, uh, well the first snowmobile we had was a 1964 yeah. 
Alouette. 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 Yeah. And uh, started with the ATVs, of course, when they started to come on the scene. Well, most of Newfoundlanders have a, a, like two homes. They have their home where they work, and then they have a home in the woods. And I think weekends, they just can't wait to get away on the weekend to go to their cottage or the cabin in the woods. And of course, we like, you know, the moose hunting, the berry picking. We are uh, unique in that we are an island, and we have a unique culture, and uh, we do have a unique speech, especially when you get away from the bigger centers. Uh, our accents and our, our sayings uh, are very different. Uh, our culture, and not only that, we have, as far as I'm concerned, we have a very beautiful province scenery-wise, and uh, it's unspoiled. And I'm proud of it. And, on, and, and safe. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Just man. a little bit of horseradish, a little dab of franks, and that's some good eating right there. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here, Ken McDonald, our producer, tells us to make good note of what we're seeing. It's not every day we get to see him in the kitchen, and certainly not often that he prepares cod tongues. Although he doesn't have the slightest idea what he's doing, our host Craig assures him he's doing just fine. Can you start drop somewhere? I start walking around with that. Sociable smoker. That's just the traditional way? This is not the traditional way. It's a little. Uh, a little different way than the traditional way. So this one's we did with some hot sauce and some spice and a bit of flour. The traditional would probably be with uh, a bit of oil, salt and pepper, a bit of flour, maybe some uh, uh, scrump. Maybe people from up scrunchions would be pork scrunchions would fry them up also, right? So it's a little different, a little more of a kick to it. But we'll try them this way for you tonight. This is my first cod tongue. Thank you. Kind of halfway between calamari and a scalp. Wow. Oh, mm, very good. It's with a bit of sadness that we end our trip to Newfoundland and Labrador. However, the new friendships and memories that we've gained will make sure that we can return to this wonderful piece of land in the very near future. Coming up, we do a little more work on our side-by-side -side vehicle transformation. This year, we managed to get our hands on our transformation vehicle a few weeks before the work began at CF Moto. So as you can see, this gave us plenty of time to strip and empty the vehicle. On the first day of work, Stéphane Soucy from Kimpex came in with lots of boxes. Stéphane brought us one of the most important parts of the vehicle, which are of course the tires. Also, in the event of a worst case scenario and a dreaded flat tire, he brought us a new product that just hit the market, and it's called Tirejacked. It is basically a liquid that vulcanizes itself where a puncture occurs. So, all you have to do is inject tire jack inside your tire and it will allow you to keep on going. In addition to the tires and the emergency flat tire rescue product, we also got custom mirrors. Our friend from Kimpex also has our safety in mind and he brought us a few new helmets. Kimpex is the manufacturer of the CKX helmet collection that has been proudly made in Drummondville, Quebec for the last 25 years. He also brought us a different kind of helmet made by the LS2 folks.
Being held on a tighter budget this year, our build really welcomes manufacturers such as Kimpex, who are able to supply us with incredible parts to customize just about any type of off-road vehicle that you can think of. From snowmobiles to ATVs to side-by-sides and even boats and motorcycles. Be diligent. Don't be afraid to do your research when working on your own build. There are parts available for any budget. Here's a sneak peek at what's coming up next week on the Off-Road Zone. We're taking you on an exclusive trip to West Yellowstone, Montana in order to try out the brand new 2018 snowmobiles from Arctic Cat, Polaris, Skidoo and Yamaha straight off the assembly line. For additional information, please visit one of the following websites. For all things Off-Road Zone, please visit us on our website at offroadzone.tv and also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash offroadzonetv. The Off-Road Zone was brought to you by CF Moto Canada. We're all in. Are you? Honda. Yamaha. Chaco. We hope you enjoyed tonight's episode. I'm Mark Gauguin. Join us again next week in the Off-Road Zone.